All right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Mr. Reinecke, are we still waiting on classes? Or? 4K and 5K are still coming. So while we wait for them, I do want to sing a song with you, and it's a really easy one. And it's one of my favorites, and I feel like it's just going to be great because we haven't been able to say this one word for like six weeks. Does anyone know what that one word is? Alleluia! Yeah, why can we say that now? Like, what, what happened this weekend? Like, why is that? Why can we say that now? Yeah, Jesus is risen. Yeah, so we say, as like God's people, we say, Christ is risen. And you all say, He is risen indeed. Alleluia! Yeah, we'll have a chance to practice that a little more throughout the day, too. Um, but as we get to say that word for the first time in like six weeks, we're going to sing a song that's totally like an alleluia. So it goes, Allelu, 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 alleluia, praise ye the Lord. Raise your hand if you know that song. Just, just, okay, awesome, that's great. Okay, so let's all sing it together once. Okay, we're going to sing it together, and then we're going to get a little special. Okay, so, allelu, 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 alleluia, praise ye the Lord, praise ye the Lord, alleluia, praise ye the Lord, alleluia, praise. up a little bit then. So can this side sing Alleluia and this side sing Praise You the Lord? Can you think about it? I'll try and direct as best as I can, but if I mess up, you just sing your part. <laughs> All right? So let's go. Alleluia, 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 Praise ye the Lord, Praise ye the Lord, Alleluia, Praise ye the Lord, Alleluia, Praise Hallelujah! Praise ye the Lord. Okay, and so Paul kind of says this thing at one point in his epistle, and he says, outdo one another in showing honor. That's kind of what he says, like, kind of make it a little bit of a competition. So that's what we're going to do this morning. But I want you to outdo one another in singing hallelujah and praise you the Lord. Okay, so let's, let's see if we can outdo the other side. Can we do that? Do you think so? Okay, so... Let's let's hear it. Can you bring it? Hallelujah. Uh, what are you doing? Sing it loud. Come on, you're, you, this is a competition. <laughs> let's sing it. All right, three, two, one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You guys are great. Awesome. Okay, let's go ahead, and we're going to start with another song. I was just waiting for 3K and 4K to get in, or 4K and 5K. Let's go ahead and sing uh, this next opening song, and so this is called Joy is the Flag, and this is one of my favorites, and since we do just, we did just celebrate Easter this past week, we do get to sing this song, and so have you ever like, how do I want to say this? Has anyone ever played Mario? You know, can I see a raise of hands who, who's ever played Mario? Okay, so if you have, go ahead and put your hands down. You know that there's a point, shh, 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 shh. there's a point, once you finish that first level, right, you jump over to the castle and you raise the flag because Mario was like victorious. Well, we as Christians, we are victorious as well. And so we get to raise this castle, or raise this flag from the castle of our hearts. And that's what this song's about. So do you want to help, go ahead and... Go to this one. So it's going to go, joy is the flag flown high from the castle of my heart. And that's how it's going to go. And so you're just going to wave your flag, though. And it's really easy. Joy is the flag flown high from the castle of my heart, from the castle of my heart, from the castle of my heart. Joy is the flag flown high from the castle of my heart, for the king is in residence there. That's how that first part's going to go. And we're just going to wave our flags because we're going to sing the joy of Jesus. But then as you want to go ahead and pro progress to the next slide. And then we're going to like, if you can, just kind of jump as like high as you can in your spot. Can you do that? So we're going to have to stand a little bit for this song. But just jump as high as you can because you're going to let the whole world know that you're flying this joy-filled flag from the castle of your heart. 
And so you go, so let it fly in the sky. Let the whole world know. Let the whole world know. Let the whole world know. So let it fly in the sky. Let the whole world know that the king is in residence there. All right, go ahead and go back to that first slide then. And we'll just kind of wave our, sli- we'll wave our flags, okay? Joy is the flag flown high from the castle of my heart, from the castle of my heart, from the castle of my heart. Joy is the flag flown high from the castle of my heart, when the king is in residence there. So let it fly in the sky, let the whole world know, let the whole world know, let the whole world know. So let it fly in the sky, let the whole world know, that the king is in residence there. Okay, I think you guys know that one. Let's do it one more time then. All right? And can you sing along with me? Sing this song with me. Can you do it? Okay. Joy is the flag flown high from the castle of my heart. From the castle of my heart. From the castle of my heart. Joy is the flag flown high from the castle of my heart. When the king is in residence there. So let it fly in the sky. Let the whole world know. Let the whole world know. Let the whole world know. So let it fly in the sky. Let the whole world know that the king is in residence there. All right, you guys are great. Yeah, you guys sound like you're celebrating Easter. That's good. Okay, so let's go ahead and make our beginning. We make our beginning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us go ahead and confess our sins because Jesus has died and has been rise, risen again. So, Heavenly Father, our sins sent your Son to the cross where he died in our place. I'm sorry, God. <laughs> Loving Jesus, you took the punishment for all our sins, even though you never sinned, not even once. I'm, I'm sorry, sorry, God. <laughs> Holy Spirit, because of our sin, you left Jesus alone when he cried, It is finished. I'm sorry, God. Jesus did die for us, all out of extreme love, though. But he didn't stay dead. He rose on Easter morning, never to die again. Because Jesus died and rose, we can be sure that all of our sins are forever taken away. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Okay, go ahead and take a seat. We're going to sing one of my other favorite Easter songs, which is the Lord of the Dance. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>
So this is our scripture reading from this, for this morning. This is taken from our All in All Things from the National Youth Gathering theme for this summer. Um, and this is Colossians 1, verse 15 to 20. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions, or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. All right. I'm going to go up here and get the clicker. But can anybody tell me what flower that I have on that pedestal in the purple pot? Does anybody know it? Thank you. Go ahead, right here. An Easter lily. Yeah, just about, by a raise of hands. How many of you have like Easter lilies in your homes right now? Oh, yeah, nice. Yeah, I had that in my office. And I, I, I thought they were going to take them all down because they said, we're going to take them all down. Do you want one? <laughs> so I was like, yes, I want one. I want to talk about it for chapel. And so I took it and I put it in my office. My office smells like absolute flowers. And that's just this little one right here. I had this one in my office. But it smells. It's like, like fumigated my office, the smell of this Easter lily. It's awesome. So the Easter lily is like one of my all-time favorite flowers. And just by, I'm very curious to see how, how much of a green thumb you guys are. Do you all have a favorite flower? Really? If I go around and ask, could you say your favorite flower? Oh, okay, I'll go over here. What's your favorite flower? Yeah, go ahead. The sunflower. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's a good one. Those get t- pretty tall. Go ahead. Roses. Oh, yeah. That's a good one, too. Daisies. Wow. You guys are pretty good with your flowers. Up here in Wisconsin, I guess you got to appreciate what you got when you got it. <laughs> go, go ahead. <laughs> daisies. Okay, yeah, daisies. Those are pretty good. Violets. Yeah, go ahead. The Easter lily. Yeah, that's mine too. Yeah, I'll take one. Go ahead, Peyton. Dandelions. All right, very good. Rar. All right. <laughs> go ahead, right here. Roses. All right, I'm going to take one more. Go ahead, Cash. Okay, nice. Very good. Okay, go ahead and put your hands down. Yeah, but these flowers are pretty great. Um, but what I want to point out right now is that we kind of see them. And, I mean, the, the, these blooms are just so pretty, right? You kind of see these really white things. But can anybody see what that is? Do you see this right here? Yeah, that's like right before it blooms. That's like what it looks like right before it turns into this big white thing. Can you all see it? Yeah. So you have this like kind of green thing that pops out and it's going to pop and it's going to make this like kind of trumpet looking thing. So yeah, the Easter lily is one of my favorites because there is a lot of reminders of Easter in the Easter lily, hence the name, Easter lily. (laughs) It's pretty great. So We're going to go ahead and talk about it for a little bit because we're going to remember how the Easter lily reminds us of Jesus' death and resurrection. And you might say, well, how does does a pretty thing like this ever remind us of death? You know, flowers are kind of used sometimes maybe on a funeral casket or maybe at a funeral to almost hide the smell of death, death and like just kind of make you forget about it for a moment. But really, this beautiful flower comes from a little bit of a death almost. And so... Do you know what these are? Can you kind of think about that? What is it? Go ahead. <laughs> a potato? Uh, not quite. It's not quite a potato. That's a pretty good guess. But if you tried to boil these up and slap some sour cream on it, you would be sorely surprised. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think they are? What, walnuts, you said? Ruts. No? Yeah, so those are pretty dirty things, though. Yeah, you're, you're on the right track. You might be surprised at what it actually is. Go ahead, Judiah. What? Garlic? No, that goes in the ground too, though. Flower seeds. Yes, but this is kind of like a, of a specific flower.
flower seed. So what these are is these are kind of really specifically known. You can go ahead and put your hands down. These are known as bulbs. These are kind of a specific type of flower seed, and you've got to plant them at a really weird time of the year. Does any, maybe do any of our teachers know, whether it be spring, summer, fall, or winter, when do you plant bulbs? Miss Tarpey? But yeah, but many go on the ground in the fall. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so that was, that was actually an Easter lily bulb. Isn't that crazy? What you thought was a potato, garlic, and uh, just kind of nastiness, <laughs> it was actually the, the start of this beautiful flower that we have here. It kind of comes from like really humble beginnings, right? And so we kind of remember when we remember that Easter lily bulb, that Easter is very much connected to Good Friday. We kind of said that in our confession of sins when we went ahead and said to Jesus that we were sorry for our sins. Well, we celebrate that Easter joy because there was some dirt that happened. There was, there was a horrible scene that happened, and that was on Good Friday. And Good Friday is when Jesus died. He did not look like he was in, a good, in good shape at all. I mean, he had stripes on his back, right? He had a crown of thorns on his head. He had, he had literally holes in his hands and in his feet. I mean, this was not a good scene. It looked very, very dirty and very messy. Maybe sometimes our lives look like that sometimes too. Maybe we cover ourselves with marker or something, <laughs> and, and that's what makes us look dirty. Or maybe we go out and roll in the mud for a little bit, right? Or we go do some things like that. Or maybe we do some things that we're not supposed to do in the classroom. Maybe we, I don't know, mess around with our brother or sister and we get in trouble by our parents. That's kind of a dirty, messy situation. Um, but we know for all of us at one point in time that Jesus was also in a dirty, messy situation. Well, what's crazy about this is that does anyone know maybe how long a bulb, like an Easter lily bulb, is in the ground for? Anybody know this? I'll go ahead and take two. I'll take two guesses. Right here. Go ahead. How long is it in the ground for? Mrs. Tarpey said it's usually in the fall. 78 days? Okay. All right. That, that's our one, one guess over here. Nope, 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 nope. Not you. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Six months. Oh, yeah, that, that's almost there. Yeah, so what I was, so I didn't really realize this until last night because I just, I had planted tulips before and I had kind of known how when they kind of spring up. You plant them in the fall and then they spring up in the spring. But I was researching last night and they said that an Easter lily bulb will stay in the ground and won't really sprout up like this until three years. Isn't that a coincidence? Isn't that kind of crazy how that happens? I guess I had always seen them like this, and I had never really realized what happens before that. Now, my research might be wrong, but <laughs> that's, that's what I was looking on last night. And so the Easter lily bulb stays in the ground for three years, two to four years, but three years for this morning's chapel. <laughs> how long do you think Jesus was in that stone grave for? Do you remember from all the stories that you heard leading up to Easter? How long, Mason? How, how many days was Jesus in, in the tomb? I should say tomb. That might... Maybe we'll go to somebody else. Do you, do you know it? How many days? Yeah, three days. Jesus was in that tomb for three days after he had been whipped, he had been on the cross, he had been all those things, and he was in the tomb for three days, just like almost this Easter lily in the ground for three days years, right? And so then we see this, and this is kind of the first sight of maybe what an Easter lily would look like. Now, we see this wonderful little sprout of green, maybe the start, little start of these flowers, these leaves, but what's surrounding it? What is all that stuff? Huh? Leaves. Now, are those, are those alive leaves? Or, no, no, they're pretty dead. Yeah, they've, they've probably gone through a winter themselves. They are dead, dead. They are, they are no good right? Those, I mean, yeah, they are only good for burning. Um, in, our, in our scripture reading this morning, Paul said in Colossians that Jesus was the firstborn from the dead. He was the very first one to be raised from the dead. Now, of course, Jesus had raised other people from the dead, but those people would die again, right? Like when he healed Lazarus and he raised Lazarus from the dead, Lazarus died again, and when he raised that little girl 
when she was on the way into the town, raised her, raised her up from the dead, but she would die again too. But Jesus is one of the first people to be raised from the dead, never to die again. This is pretty cool. And this is what the Easter lily reminds us of too. Because as that Easter lily is so eager to spring up right in the spring, after three years or so, right, Jesus is also eager to get out of that tomb to raise, to raise himself from the dead so that we might have that hope. And that's what the Easter lily reminds us of too, that, that like amongst all of this dead stuff, amongst all the dead of our lives, and we kind of see death all around us, that our loved ones die, we, our bodies kind of age and decay and all those things, but we get this hope from Jesus that we will be raised someday, that that's going to, that his joy and his resurrection will be our joy and our resurrection too. And so we give God thanks for this beautiful plant that reminds us of this wonderful story, which is Jesus' death and resurrection and that we get to celebrate and we get to say, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Yeah, this is the joy that God gives to us. Um, so this is, I love this picture too because this kind of really defines it too. We, we see kind of all the black around it, right? All the black around, that kind of symbolizes death. But then Jesus kind of leads this person, which really is kind of, uh, it's all of us as well, leads us from death into life. And there's no more darkness, no more death. There's only Jesus and Jesus forever because of his cross. Okay, so let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the death and resurrection of your son Jesus. We thank you for the joy that this gives us. We thank you for the Easter lily plant that constantly reminds us of all the things uh, that Jesus has done for us. We remember this wonderful, beautiful story uh, of the Easter lily, but also of Jesus. We thank you for uh, the death that Jesus went through that paid for all of our sins. And we thank you for that resurrection as well that kind of confirms to us and tells us and reassures us that yes, all of our sins have been paid for and all of uh, us will be raised to new life again someday. Uh, Lord, this day we also want to come to you and we want to ask that you be with all of our loved ones, uh, be with those who might be uh, mourning the loss of their loved ones, uh, be with all of us who might be in those situations. Lord, we ask that you would strengthen and heal uh, all of our loved ones who might be in a sick situation. Or we ask that you would be with all the students here and maybe who are not here this morning because they are sick. Uh, we just ask that you keep everybody healthy and uh, good and serve, serving you in all they do and say. Lord, we ask that you would be with our school today in all days that we might uh, first and foremost remember you and you crucified and resurrected for us as we go about our studies, as we learn about all of our different subjects, but we also more importantly learn that we are loved by you and that we because you love us, we get to love others around us. So Lord Jesus, all this we pray in your most holy name. Amen. Let's go ahead and stand and pray that Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Okay, then we're going to sing our last song. You can go ahead and take a seat for this one.
now receive the Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen. Hey, Mr. Reinick, hear their announcements. All right, thank you, Vicar Jacob, for leading chapel today and accompanying yourself, I guess. <laughs> Um, so this uh, is a special week as we have still some of the Easter flowers in here in the Easter lilies, a uh, great reminder of Christ's resurrection. Um, today, <clears throat> there will be a little bit of time for practice afterwards for a few of the classes for the musical. So you guys will stay here unless your teacher has said that you're going to leave uh, when we dismiss. Um, today and tomorrow, we have four guests with us that are um, kind of examining and looking over our school. <clears throat> this last year, we've been doing a self-study about how we're doing as a school um, and following our vision and our mission. Uh, and so they'll be looking at some of the stuff that we've worked on and then maybe doing some observing. You may see them in your classroom. If I could just have you stand up our visitors back there. So uh, they have some name tags on too. You can say hi to them in the hall if you see them. But for the most part, they may be um, in that room. Uh, we call it 119, but it's down just before you get to like Mr. Brockman's office. So thank you guys. Um, thanks for being here. Um, we also will continue to work with our offerings going towards um, Ukraine and what those people are going through. So that'll be at uh, this month and next month. Um, are there any other announcements, teachers? I don't think so. All right. So have a great day as you serve the Lord. And those of you that are going back to class, you can take your exit now, and then um, Mrs. Reinecke will get going with the uh, practice for those that are remaining. <clears throat>